uh, I want to thank Yurkos for this chance to share a few thoughts on international leadership, international school leadership. I'm particularly pleased and honored to be in the same segment with my highly respected and good friends, Tom and Dick. As you can see, we are extremely lucky uh, to have such colleagues. Uh, before starting, I wanted to let you know there will be no PowerPoint, um, but something that does seem to work for me uh, is to include music in the presentation. This is who I am, and since this is my speech and I can do what I want, there will be music today. Uh, not just any music. Uh, I found that the sound and lyrics of country rock music can sometimes capture a deep thought in a clear and straightforward manner. My international school leadership journey has been an amazing ride. With the announcement to leave my current position in June 2018 and take a gap year, I naturally have had cause to reflect on so much. Privileged is the word that keeps coming up for me, as I know it does for most of you. I've been very lucky over the years with so many wonderful opportunities that have come my way. For Lillian and me, this right here has been our community for over 40 years. You are like family, even though there are many of you whom we've never met yet. We share the bond of leaving our home countries to attempt to have impact on an international school community. It is very special, and we are all fortunate to be involved. But the work of ahead is extremely hard, as most of you will attest. Almost immediately as your tenure begins, you lose your identity as an independent individual. You cannot just be yourself when you want to be. You can also assume that you are talked about just about every night at some dinner table in the community, some parking lot, and most certainly at a cocktail reception where the truth serum of alcohol flows freely. The pressure on our personal lives is intense. The demands of the job mean that our families sacrifice a lot in order for us to do it. As the mayor of a small town, you're never fully off duty. You know more and are responsible for more than you really would ever care to about people. From being confronted with the safety and security of a school community to the inevitable illness, tragedy, and even, yes, death, we are responsible for so much more than we imagined, having to deal with the challenges for which we did not necessarily receive that training in Admin 101. Etched in my mind is the memory <clears throat> of being called to a location near school about 3.30 one afternoon some years ago at Eunice to identify the body of a much beloved Swedish PE teacher who went out for an afternoon jog, had a heart attack, and died on the spot. I know many of you have stories in handling such crises. I repeat, the work is hard. And there are inherent risks that we all face as the opportunities come along. Failure is waiting around the corner. Our communities are quite fragile, and relationships can change quite quickly. So my presentation today is about an international school leadership topic that's not discussed very much. I'm talking about failure. I'm talking about trying your best, giving it your best shot, and falling flat on your face. My story, sadly, is one that has played out and continues to play out in some form or fashion far too often for others. On a warm day in the spring of 1995 in Damascus, the board chair entered my office, asked me for my keys and my laptop, said I was done, and escorted me off campus, never to return. The details are not so clear now, and they're not so important anymore anyway. I do remember the shock and the disbelief I felt, and this was quickly replaced by shame and humiliation as I caught the gaze of some faculty, staff, and students as I left the campus with the board chair. Waves of helplessness followed in the ensuing days, weeks, and months. Was the board out of line and out of control? Absolutely. They had been micromanaging for some time, 
chose to interview every teacher over the previous three months regarding the apparent problems and simply didn't leave me alone to do my job. It would have been easy for me to slide into board bashing and put all the blame on them. But I eventually had to admit that I too had to take responsibility for what happened. My conflict avoidance and defensive approach in the face of criticism contributed greatly to my mismanagement of several situations that contributed to this final outcome. I knew there were problems. I just wasn't sure how to handle them. I didn't have the courage, insight, or maturity to admit it and seek help. I just hoped that somehow it would all go away. So I was at the lowest point in my life. I had let my family down, myself down, and I had no idea what I was going to, to do. Needless to say, it was an extremely difficult period for me. Now, what we do know about failure is not the fact that it happens, but what we choose to do about it. Over the next few minutes, I'd like to share three major takeaways with you within that theme of international school leadership around this failure. The first major takeaway is what I didn't do before the hammer came down. And looking back on my Damascus experience, I had the belief that I needed to figure things out for myself. I thought that to seek help was not only a sign of weakness, but would also serve to reinforce those who believe that I lacked the experience or the skill to do the job. I'm a charming fellow, and I was sure that the things were not that bad, that, that people liked me and that I was on top of things, and they, as they started to go south about one year previous, I thought it would be fine. Needless to say, I was foolish, naive, and basically wrong in my approach. The advice I now embrace can be found in the following song from the 60s, which was also covered later in the movie called Urban Cowboy by Mickey Gilly. Come and the land is dark, and the moon is the only light you'll see. No, I won't be afraid. No, I won't be afraid. Just as long as you stand. Stand by me Won't you stand by me Won't you stand by me If you're in need Won't you stand, stand by me So my first learning was that you cannot do this job, or any job for that matter, in isolation. There is significant strength in being honest with myself regarding a perceived weakness with which I might need help. Reach out to someone. Maintain contact with a few colleagues from this day forward. You'd be amazed at the number of people who are out there to stand by you, who would not think less of you for reaching out to them. Our work is very isolating. We can all benefit from some coaching, mentoring, and keeping a regular dialogue with a few critical friends on a regular basis, even when there's not a crisis. This IRCOS conference has always been an opportunity to connect with others for me, and I know Dick and his team highly value that for us. And I'm so pleased to hear about the start of the IRCOS mentoring program to further promote this kind of support. <clears throat> I might add that this goes for all of us, not just those starting out. I'm convinced that more often than not, 
we contribute to the problems we face. Get out in front of this by going to people who you, whom you can trust, to be honest with you, and do it before it becomes a crisis or before the point of no return. The second major takeaway began to sink in fairly quickly after the fact. <clears throat> with the help of a colleague, my good friend Jim Maines, who passed away a few years ago, I received an important insight. After listening to my story for about 10 minutes, he stopped me and he said, Chip, you need to do a Kenny Rogers. I said, a what? He said, a Kenny Rogers. Look, you know country music, and the best way I can explain it is to have you think about one of his most famous songs. You got to know when to hold them. I can feel it. You want to sing. Here we go. One, two, three. You got to know. Come on. Know when to fold them. Know when to walk away. Know when to run. You never count your money. When you're sitting at the table. groupies. <laughs> I only have two. <laughs> Jim Maines went on to explain that <clears throat> there's a few select set of circumstances such that no matter how badly you feel you've been treated, no matter how right you think you are, you simply need to remove yourself from the situation. There was so much I wanted to say and do in the days after I was escorted off campus. You can imagine the rumors, the untruths that were floating around the community like wildfire. And I was powerless to stop them or put things right. I wanted the chance to speak out, to exonerate myself, to let the community know the truth. But Jim convinced me that in the end, there was nothing to be gained by trying to fix things when you are relatively powerless to do anything about it in the end. He went on to counsel that, <clears throat> in due course, I will be able to look back and determine what I learned from it. And as we have heard on so many occasions, often our most painful experiences are the ones we learn the most from if we get far enough away and get a perspective. So in the end, I became convinced that this was the best and the only real option I really had at my disposal. Take myself out of the situation as soon as feasibly possible and work towards seeking answers to the question, what did I learn from this? But even after walking away from a situation like this, the feelings of anger, hurt, and failure lingered. Now, this may be human nature, but it continued to be a problem for me. It was not in my best interest in the long term to continue to feel this way. I was determined to push ahead with my life and get on with things. But bitterness and resentment set in as the months went by. I caught myself talking about more and more in terms of what they did to me and how unjustly I was treated. I was in danger of functioning in reaction to what happened, and this was preventing me from presenting my best self. As life went on and I continued to reflect on this traumatic event and read and listened, it was in hearing about and reading and watching Nelson Mandela and his reconciliation program in post-apartheid South Africa, this was the 90s by the way, that triggered in me the need to take one more st step, to just let it go. This is the third takeaway. Sometimes it involves forgiveness, of ourselves, of others, 
Sometimes it means accepting the fact that while our work is important, it's not quite as dire as sometimes we make it out to be. We take ourselves a little too seriously sometimes, and that's not good. We are not the only ship out on the ocean. One need only listen to or read the news to put things in perspective. Our challenge is pale in the shadow of the far more serious, sometimes life and death that we heard this morning issues faced by so many people each day. Letting go always allows you to listen clearly once again to your heart with renewed strength and take advantage of that next opportunity that comes along. The ultimate goal is reconciliation with yourself and with the people and the events that were involved. So in summary, making mistakes, and yes, failure, is an inevitable part of what we do. The key is what we do about it and not let it get in the way of risk-taking, of getting away of our own feelings of self-worth and being our best selves. Several, several of you in this room have been through something like what I went through, and you found a way to learn from it, move on, and be highly successful. So my experiences taught me three things. Seek guidance. Find someone that, to stand by you at all times. They are out there. Trust me. Second, be able to walk away when it's clear the situation cannot be changed. And finally, to let it go and move on. And if you keep thinking about it, the wisdom is often right in front of you in the lyrics of a favorite song. I conclude with a song from one of my favorite groups, an indie country band called the Zac Brown Band, and this addresses this final takeaway with the song, Let It Go. With a friend of mine and a handle of good whiskey We picked guitars and we talked about How the glory days went missing it Didn't take too long to find the truth inside that bottle Cast the sea so long ago was a message from my father Keep your heart above your head and your eyes wide open so this world can't find a way to leave you cold No, you're not the only ship out on the ocean Save your strength for things that you can't change Forget the ones you can't, you gotta let them go Looking back now on my life, I can't say I regret it and all the places that I've ended up, not the way my would have had it. But you only get one chance in life to leave your mark upon it. So when the pony, he comes riding by, you better set your sweet ass on it. Keep your heart above your head and your eyes wide open. So this world can't find a way to leave you cold. No, you're not the only ship out on the ocean. Save your strength for things that you can change. Forget the ones you can't, you gotta let them go. Save your strength for things that you can't change. Forget the ones you can't, you gotta let them go.